Okay, we're looking at a dam today. Much more, but we're gonna begin with this dam. This is a dam in Arizona. I believe we can see a man right here. Man, hair, maybe one hair. This definitely looks like a man. We see a building back here. An old worlder. And I want you to notice the size of these blocks in comparison to this man. These blocks are the blocks. They would call type of Richardsonian Romanesque building block giant. The same ones I find in strange places in Utah, such as Standardville, Utah. Giant wall in the middle of nowhere up in the mountains. Recently I will have shared some blockage in Provo, Utah. Utah. But here we are in Arizona, the heart of Indian and cowboy country. In fact, we're told this bridge was built by the Navajos, and we'll get into that today. I want to thank Chris at Old World Explorations here. He made a video about five days ago on this subject. I encourage you to watch it if this interests you. Thanks for being here. God bless and welcome. So here we are. We see President Roosevelt giving a speech and naming this dam after himself. Of course. Here we can see some more of the blockage. And at one point this was the world's largest masonry dam. Built originally between 1905 and 1911. It was renovated in 1889 to 1996. Really short amount of time to build a dam. The history. In 1888, this man and his mustache were the surveyor for Maricopa County in Arizona. In 1889, he surveyed the Salt River for dam sites. After a week on horseback, they found the best site for a dam. Traveling one week on horse. And I like that. They don't often tell us how far out these sites would have been in this time period. I am appreciative of them telling us this. Let me just show you how far away this is from Phoenix. Here we go. If you don't know, I grew up right around here, not far from this heart, and used to go rafting or tubing down the Salt River, this very river. And this is out here, driving in a car, maybe an hour and a half to get out to this dam. And they tell us one week, one week by horse, through the mountains, over the rivers. I mean, certainly you'd want a train in place before you thought of building a dam out here in this time period. And here is the dam today. Again, it's been renovated. Renovated, the blockage has been refaced with new concrete, but much old world blockage as this building over here shows, and even this mystery here into the mountain down here, and up front here, this really old world building, clearly, much can be discovered, again such as this picture right here, here a section, just a section of the old block dam. Now just wrap your head around these blocks, again the little man standing down here, and the time period, a week travel on horse. So that means we're moving all these blocks into place with these primitive means. Eventually they would turn this dam into a hydroelectric power plant. That hasn't happened yet. There is no power. The Roosevelt Dam was the first major project to be completed under the new Federal Reclamation Project. One of the world's largest or highest masonry dams. Here we see a poor picture, but we see it still in its block phase. Here again, looking more original, buildings still the same, and a very castle-y feel to it. Here again, the president in the old block work behind him, just a small section, and it really reminded me of the anomalous site I discovered in Provo, Utah, and shared in my last video. Many of you said it looks like a dam, and I agree, the same blockage. In the case of Provo, it seems like it had been damaged, and here we can see an old film depicting this old dam. We see the president 
looking like a real shyster. We see the so-called construction, this very primitive bucket, not capable of any hydraulic power, just a simple opening and closing mechanism with chain and pulley. Here we can see it again, and this was a really fascinating depiction. I mean, look at this building built right into the mountain, totally cooked out in ruins, but yet we still see a lot of preservation here. This looks like this building over here, but this whole section has been turned into mountain, cooked. Here we can see some men working, or maybe a man and a woman. Here we can see some high tech back in the day. And here on this government website, they show us a nice picture of it. We see little structures down here again, and even structures down here. These are all walls down here. And look at the caption. The original rubble masonry dam. The original rubble. There we go. Why would they say that? And again, I encourage you to check out Chris's video at Old World Exploration. He always does a great job of pulling up some of the best pictures. Here's one, for example, from his video. Here is one showing construction. We see all this blockage everywhere. The primitive means of construction that we would be told would build this dam in less than 10 years. This is an old color picture showing it. Again, we can see the structures built into the mountain chunk here. Now, suddenly, we are told the dam is almost finished. Honestly, this looks like the condition they may have found it in. We see a little crane here. Mind you, this crane will have had to have been brought in by horse through the mountains. A week's travel. Here we can see a close-up of one of the buildings. And we can see those other structures clearly from another time. Come on, back here. Structures fusing into unrecognizable mountain. So this is something we can go check out today. A masonry dam. Wrap your head around that. Building a dam out of giant blocks. A waterproof dam in under 10 years. So they built it quicker with no power, horse and wagon, than the renovation or basically facing it with cement took. Now, if I hadn't done this research for years, I might not recognize the fact that this construction is identical to what we see all over the realm. This has the same look as the Niagara Falls, the hydroelectric plant there, including all the buildings, tons of buildings, built into a wall, just like this, old world block buildings. And this is no joke here, this is the mother of structures. It's one thing to see blocks or block buildings, but when you see this same technique being employed in a massive castle-esque dam, in my opinion, becomes very clear that they, those in control, know the truth. And as early as Roosevelt, they began pushing this lie. This man is nothing more than an actor, a poser. And with that, I want to move on to my next piece. Something that was shared by Howdy Mikowski, it seems like a year or so ago, and was recently shared again by a channel called Drumstick. First time I saw it, I thought about it a lot, and on this particular day, I thought I would share it with you. I think I'm going to talk about this episode called The Newsbenders. It came out in 1968, and this man here is waiting for somewhat of an interview. He's not really happy about it. It seems he might be a part of this company, but they want to recruit him to a higher level. This is just a conversation between two people, similar to the movie My Dinner with Andre. So he offers him a cigar, and he's still puzzled as to why he's here. He used to work for the BBC, and he's very uninterested, and quickly this man begins telling him about himself, perhaps to prove that he means business, that he knows everything about him. At first, it doesn't really impress the man. Small things like he owns a cottage, dog and a cat, what he's done over the years, and then it starts to get a little more intense. He tells him about his wife, his children, and his girlfriend 
girlfriend, his affair. Now he's very shocked and also becomes very angry. At this point, he thinks he's being blackmailed. He tells him that they've been interested in him for a long time. And from all the information that they have, it's clear to him that they know everything. But he's still a little apprehensive. So he shows him a little chip and says he has one of these little chips implanted in him. When he went into the hospital for an appendix surgery, this transmitter was put into him. It monitors the pulse rate and anything that he gets excited about will trigger this and essentially record every word that he says. He says, for example, on July 26th, you were talking to this girl, Sheila, his affair, and he tells him exactly what he uttered to her. And now he has his attention. The boss man goes further and begins playing an audio recording of his very words from years ago. And now it's unmistakable to this character. Undeniable. He knows it's true. He's heard his own voice. So now he's asking about him. Who are you then? And the guy pretty much tells him that he works for a larger organization. There's a vacancy in their news department and they'd like to write or plan the news for 1973. So this would be several years later. So this is what he has been proposed. Still not wanting to accept, the man takes him on a tour to show him the back room. To show him essentially that he's not kidding. That the news is a creation and it's made in this building. So they've only roughed out the news for 1973. But these are the kind of things that they're working on. He tells him. He shows him a spaceship. Something that is said to land on the moon. And he's showing him the footage. The fake footage that they filmed with this cheap little gadget. We can see the fake lunar landing or surface. Now he shows him something else. He says, this is something we're really proud of. 1973, it will be released. Codename Icarus. This satellite is equipped with weaponry to stop missiles. It can freeze air solid, stopping all missiles, killing all forms of life. Icarus orbits at the same speed as the Earth can hang in position over every major city that threatens the peace-loving nations. I mean, this predates a lot of the things we've come to understand now. And here, in 1968, they're talking about creating fake news for the people. And we can see the fake Earth in the background. And here again, we can see craters of the moon or Mars. Now he shows him a television broadcast for September 5th, 1973. A new phase in warfare. And here is a fake war and really interesting. It looks like a melted building. And they're saying that two five megaton H-bombs have cooked this area. That will be the fictitious news in 1973 in the future. The guy asks him, you're gonna make this happen? And he says, no, we're going to make models. It's much cheaper to photograph models. For the past 10 years, the people have been listening to our fake news and listening to our fake commentaries. Again, this is a film from 1968. They accept it for the truth. Now this man is coming to terms, realizing that nobody's actually seen a missile. Nobody's actually been to space. Of course, they can be told whatever through the television or even print media. He says it's one thing to fake space, but people might figure things out with this artificial war. People will know. People could check up. And the man says there'll be no survivors in 1973. No rescue work. He says we usually plan the details in the final year. Now he asks him, what has bothered you the most in the past year? He says the American continental ballistic missile, the boy wonder. And here he reveals the boy wonder to him. And the man's only seen the pictures. It's only been shown as a giant projectile. And here it's just mini. And he's actually a little apprehensive, actually a little scared of it. Again, it was the thing he was most worried about in the world. Now discovering it's just a little toy model. He says it's a scientific impossibility. But nonetheless, it was sold to the people. He asks them what they're doing at Cape Kennedy. 
when they're shooting off missiles and things to be launched into space. And he tells him we're just having a fireworks party almost every other day. He tells him, did you really think that there were things whizzing about up there? Sputnik, rockets, astronauts crossing their legs for eight days. He says it's been going on since Hiroshima. He says, what's your first reaction? And he says, relief. And he says, it has to be relief. So he says that was the photographic department taking the phony newsreel pictures of our models and processing film. And now he shows him a front cover of a magazine showing this toy, toy rocket that he's just had a look at. And he says, I've only shown you the hard news. There are other things much softer, things we thought might interest you. He talks about a teenage movement that they're planning. Now he asks him, why? Why do all this? He says, you remember in 1945, the Americans let off two atomic bombs. Well, they didn't want other people doing the same thing. So they began creating a story that there was something much bigger in the works, the H-bomb, but it didn't work. He says, don't the other countries have these? He says, they're all working together, all part of this show. And I think this is something that we have discovered it wasn't shocking to me, but it was shocking to see a film in 1968 really revealing what would become so obvious in our time. He talks about how this is how they have ultimately created peace. He said, this avoids all conflicts. There is no danger of anybody wiping anybody out. But the illusion of it will be propagated. And this is the sinister part, even today. He talks about how people think they have a choice, capitalism or communism, strawberry or vanilla, and in the end it's all the same thing. Giving people the illusion that they have a choice. He talks about how all the presidents are being controlled in all politics. Politicians. He says, we control all the events, we build them up, and then we shut them down. At the top, there's the economists, the top civil servants, top brass in the military, men who are above and beyond. He says, 99.38% of the population wouldn't believe this conversation, and the rest are working for us. The rest are proud because they know they're guaranteeing the lives of their grandchildren, essentially by creating this false reality, this Truman Show for the masses. And this man is very upset. He says, you've achieved peace by scaring the hell out of the grandchildren and essentially all the people. And he's upset. He talks about the full bellies and the empty bellies. We've devised two ways to keep the empty bellies under control. One of them is this fictitious hydrogen bomb and the other is money. Again, let me remind you, 1968. He says certain animals run when they're scared. Some bury their heads in the sand. You scare a hedgehog and it rolls itself up into a ball. He says when a woman woman is frightened, she goes out and buys herself a hat. He says we threaten humans emotionally. He says people don't work for money, they work for the idea of money. They don't even love, they love for the idea of love. And he shows him the idea that has been sold on love, the idea that they've even created. How love should be. He tells him they created LSD. And here it's wrapping up. He says, you're not really going to ask me to work for you, are you? I mean, he's totally disgusted. And essentially, he tells him about the supercomputer, about the AI. Back then, in 1968, and he said the top floor of this building is a supercomputer. Everything going through this computer. Predicting and making decisions. And this man is very upset. He says, you're basically controlled by a computer. And the man says, no, it's just extra hands for the people who know how to control it. And in short, he tells him he's leaving. And the man replies that that little implant that they put in him, in which he knows is real now, because they have audio recordings of his life filed and archived. And he's heard them. He's heard his own voice. And he says that little implant has another purpose. He puts on some rubber gloves, pulls out one of the implants, and says there's enough in that implant to kill six people. It's like an explosive. He asked him at one point if he had one of these. He said yes, of course. And essentially, he realizes he has no choice. This whole meeting had a desired outcome that would take place whether he liked it or not. And essentially it ends by the man telling him, you start on Monday. Again, this comes out in 1960. 
68, and this idea is that this group is creating all the news, and that nothing is really going on. Most people are not seeing the news with their eyes. They're only getting it from a few sources. Very revealing. I encourage you to watch this. I really just skimmed over everything, but that's the gist. And I would propose that things are much worse today. But I think that's pretty clear. Anyway, thanks for being here this week. I love you all. God bless. And I'll see you soon.